welcome to this photo manipulation tutorial. We've got a giant pet cicada being walked. So wouldn't you if you had a giant pet cicada? So sit back and relax and watch me create this photo manipulation. So got my original base plate image of this kid walking his dog. So what we've got to do initially, obviously, is remove this dog and its shadow. Because we're going to replace it with a cicada. So what you can do is use the patch tool, but before using the patch tool, you really need to separate this image. Basically, it can't be attached to anything to be able to use the patch tool successfully. So I've got to create this barrier. So I'm going to use the clone stamp tool. I'm going to click Alt on that pavement and just create this barrier where the dog, uh, its leash and the shadow is going to exist on its own and not going to be attached to anything, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to do that. Click over here by holding down Alt or Option on Mac. And basically gonna go around all of where the dog is attached to anything and create this sort of separation. So I'm gonna scroll up here and even where the leash is attached to the dog, I'm gonna click somewhere over there in the pavement and just remove that enough not sure how much you have to remove but he's got to be on his own little layer so i've got the patch tool and i'm gonna just select just works like the freehand selection tool just go all around him and in between there and the leash and then once he's selected click drag to the right and you're just trying to find somewhere that looks remotely close and the patch tool does a pretty good job. So even if you're not perfect, it'll do a fairly good job. And then just hit uh, Control D to deselect that selection. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the dog's shadow. Using that clone stamp tool, gonna select uh, while hitting Option on Mac, Alt on PC. So this layer or this area of his uh, shadow needs to be completely on its own so even that little section uh, where the leash shadow is up there I'm gonna erase that so I'm gonna go back to the patch tool and select that once that is selected click in the center drag to the right try to line up sort of with that area you can already kind of see that there was a bit of an imperfection in that pavement already with this line right here so having that as well in our corrected area is not that big of a deal in my opinion but you could spend hours and hours in trying to make that pavement look absolutely perfect but i'm not going to do that so I've got three different images of a cicada. Ended up uh, capturing one and then taking different angles on a white piece of paper. So what you can do is just reduce the opacity. Try to figure out what perspective of which picture is working the best. Of course, you can use the move tool, V as in Victor, move that around and just go back and forth, reducing the opacity of each one of these. If you've only got one picture, then you're kind of stuck. Maybe you need to then look for different background pictures, but the perspective and angle and scale and sometimes where the sun is hitting, it's all fairly important when you're trying to choose which photos to, to combine. So I've chosen this one, and another trick you can do is just selecting around it, really loose selection. 
hitting uh, Control J to have that on its own layer, and uh, moving that around in combination with reducing the opacity. Um, that'll help. It's, it, at least there's less you know, distracting material, in, in this case, of that white paper that it was sitting on. So that might help in figuring out where to uh, place this. So I've figured out where to place it. I'm going to use the pen tool to select all around it. So in my opinion, this is the best way to get all of that detail of your subject. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. So then once you've connected all of that, hit Control Enter. It will uh, select that. And ultimately you're gonna hit Control J to have it on its own layer. And I'm gonna go in and select these little negative space areas and just delete. All these areas where you're just seeing the paper of its uh, background showing through. So I've got that in the uh, main area there. And just trying to figure out the angle, maybe it needs to be uh, scaled down or up or rotated. So I've hit Control T to do all of those things, scale or rotate. You can right click on it. In this case, hitting rotate. Maybe it needs to rotate it just a little bit. So it looks as if it's going straight. So, really wanting the wing of the cicada to be behind this kid's leg. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you could also have it in front, but I'm going to go ahead and select his leg and uh, have that leg be its own layer. So I've got that selected. I'm gonna hit Control J to have uh, that leg on its own layer. If you want to solo a layer, just hold down Alt or Option on Mac and hit that eyeball, and it'll solo it. Do the exact same thing to unsolo it. So I'm gonna label that something, just so you know what it is and where it is. So now, with uh, moving that extra leg layer above the cicada, you've got the wing uh, in back of it. So doing things like this with stuff you're trying to put in an environment that it doesn't belong, helps it set it back in that environment. So hitting a layer mask on that cicada layer. What I'm gonna do is make sure I've got super uh, soft brush. So I've got the layer mask on the cicada because I'm wanting to see a little bit of that background, that pavement. So just showing you what this brush is gonna do. I'm basically erasing some of the cicada, but not like this. Some of those parts of that wing are or should be transparent. So in using pen pressure now, and you can also, if you don't have a pen, just uh, do this with the opacity. I'm gonna try to erase some of that wing that should be transparent. So this one will show a little bit of that pavement, but more importantly, probably for this, is that it's gonna affect the shadow of the cicada. So you'll really be able to see the uh, subtle nuances of those transparent areas in between those veins of the wing of the cicada. So it'll become more obvious what I'm doing once I create the shadow. So 
So I'm going to click on that main uh, cicada layer and hit Control C, Control V to duplicate that. I'm going to name this uh, cicada. I'm going to name this cicada shadow. I put that on top of the main layer of the cicada. Or actually below that and going to go to my levels so this is an adjustment layer that I forgot to clip only to the shadow layer so the way you do that is hover in between with your mouse or pen and while hitting alt it'll clip it to that layer so that now whatever whatever I do with levels will only affect the cicada shadow So I'm going to go ahead and hit control T and then flip vertically. And you can see all of those little subtle transparencies in the wing of the shadow now. Just an extra layer of uh, realism. So I'm going to hit the transform tool after hitting control T. And you can tell by the look of the shadows of the trees and the kid which direction it's going. And I'm also going to try to uh, line up at least one of the legs with where it should be and then just puppet warp the other sections close to where they should be. You can also hold down control for more of a fine touch when you're moving something. So I'm going to go to Puppet Warp and I'm going to select certain areas that I'm wanting to move independent of other areas. So selecting these feet and then you can move them, put that where that foot should be or where that shadow should be. Again, holding down control to be able to have more of a finer touch in moving anything really. So I'm going to create more pins, sometimes to keep things in place, other pins in order to move it. I'm wanting to move this so that it's slightly up against that one foot. I'm going to have a pin on that other foot. And then, of course, you can reduce the opacity. So I'm not going to have the opacity be the same level as that uh, shadow from the kid. I've tried it, it just, for whatever reason, doesn't look right. But also going to go into Filter and then Gaussian Blur. And you can really overdo this blur to the point where it doesn't look realistic at all. But usually I like to start at zero and then just move towards the right just ever so slightly, just to the point where it's looking right. And then you can, of course, increase or decrease the opacity. You can also uh, select the blur tool and blurring that edge that is furthest away from the subject. So that edge should be slightly more blurry, more faded as it moves away from uh, the cicada. So I'm going to create another layer and uh, this will be for the darker shadows that uh, whenever you're creating shadows you really need to have at least two. One, the main shadow, and then uh, a really important shadow is like right underneath, in this case, where the feet are hitting. So I'm going to create a darker shadow on this contact point for all of these feet. So that one leg that's near his mouth, I'm not going to worry about that. We're just going to pretend that that is up in the air, because to try to connect that would be uh, really challenging. But if you're feeling up to it. So creating these darker shadows, 
can tell it's it's starting to look a little bit more realistic as if he is actually on that pavement. So creating an adjustment layer here of levels. Of course, I have forgotten to clip it. I'm going to go in between levels and that layer and holding down alt clip it to only affect the bug. So playing around with these levels you can also use curves to do essentially the same thing. But trying to match uh, that faded look. I noticed this seemed to uh, enhance the, the look of those wings as if they were being hit by that sun. So creating another adjustment layer, clipping it to only affect the main cicada layer, not the shadow. You can reduce or increase the saturation. So I'm going to decrease the saturation a little bit. Everything's a little bit faded. So just to match his uh, level of saturation with that kid. Very subtle difference. You can also create yet another layer here. It is a color balance trying to mess with these controls to see what type of color. Maybe it needs more yellow because of that sunlight. creating another adjustment layer, that of uh, curves. So what I'm going to do here is decrease the brightness, but not to the point where it's too far down. And then I'm going to create an inverse of that. So hitting Control I will create an inverse. And what you can do then, because this is a layer mask, is using black or white in this case white to reveal some of that darkness we created. So this part of the cicada should be a little bit darker because it is on the exact opposite side of where the sun is hitting. So again another subtle difference but all of these little subtle differences added together will really help the realistic look of your uh, composition. It's before and after with that curve. So I'm going to create another curves adjustment, this time doing the exact opposite of what I just did. So I'm going to increase the brightness Right about there, maybe a little bit brighter. Gonna hit Control I, Command I on the Mac. So it's creating an inverted look here where you've got a layer mask, you're using white to reveal what you've just done and then hidden. So we've got some highlights on the wing, got that sun hitting it. Creating another layer, I'm going to call this uh, Highlights. And going to maybe just select some of that color of the wing. But basically any very light yellow leaning towards orange to try to uh, suggest sunlight hitting that. So on a separate layer here, and just painting directly on there 100% opacity, knowing I can just reduce the opacity 
later to uh, get a more subtle effect. Even hitting that leg there would have some sunlight. So before and after, and of course you can just reduce this to zero and then slide it towards the right until it starts to look right. Gonna create another layer and this will be highlights two with uh, what we did with that wing in creating some transparencies it doesn't have those highlights that the right side of the wing has so you can go in and trying to just look at the right side of the wing for reference and trying to replicate some of those really bright yellow highlights where the sun is hitting uh, the cicada. So this is one of those things you can just go back and forth on it all day and trying to uh, create those little subtle nuances of the light playing in that wing. So zooming out there, it's how it's looking. And we gotta work on that leash, because remember to use the patch tool, I had to get rid of that leash. We would have had to have gotten rid of it a little bit anyway, because it wouldn't have lined up exactly how it did with that dog. So selecting that, gonna hit Control J to get that leash section on its own layer. I'm gonna solo that layer just to make sure I have selected that. Label that leash. And with the move tool, V as in Victor on the keyboard, gonna just grab that and drag that down towards the cicada's neck. I'm gonna put that layer towards the top. And like I've said, you can hold down control and get a lot more of a finer touch to moving that leash or any object. Zooming out here and decided to take the saturation on the uh, cicada down just a little bit from where it was. creating a new layer here and I'm going to try to get like a general sunlight can also select the cicada's wing but something orange yellow but really bright and I'm going to switch to the brush tool and I'm going to go ahead and create a really big brush and make sure that it's a super soft brush as well. So I've got an enormous brush here. I'm gonna zoom out just so I can see because the brush is gonna become bigger than the, the image. And uh, I'm gonna just start painting with 100% opacity on the brush on this upper left corner where we know the sunlight is coming in through. and then go back to the opacity, bring it down to zero, and then just slightly go up to the right. So doing something like this, you're putting this layer on top of both of them, kind of setting both of them into that space together, or at least it helps them be set in that space. So you can go back and forth with the opacity, reduce or increase, created another layer and essentially doing the same thing where I've got that same color and this is really with a smaller brush isolated towards only that top uh, left not spilling out into the middle of the image so reduce the opacity basically do the exact same thing
Gonna hit Control Alt Shift and E to create a layer where everything is on that layer. Gonna go to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter. Just mess with all of these controls. Gonna just increase the contrast just a little bit. And maybe do some vignetting. So just a subtle amount of vignetting to lead one's eye towards that center. And hit OK. So I also created a couple of other variations. This one turned out all right, maybe not as good, but different angle that you can see there. And uh, this one had quite a bit of trouble with it. There weren't many shadows in the base plate image, so I ended up doing a heavy grade with a lot of grain to kind of cover up the problems, but that one didn't work as well. So there you have it, giant pet cicada photo manipulation tutorial. So be sure and subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video, comment, and thank you for watching.